In this video, we're going to be discussing block heaters versus engine oil heaters, also discussing the other varieties of diesel cold weather starting aids out there. Doesn't look like this engine needs any help though. Hey guys, this is Josh with Depth Tape Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing diesel engine cold starting aids. Now, what the heck am I talking about? I am talking about block heaters. I'm talking about engine oil heaters, fuel heaters, battery heaters, inlet air heaters, ether start, basically anything that can assist a diesel engine in starting in cold winter conditions. <laughs> Now, diesel engines are notorious for being hard starting in cold conditions. I have a video discussing why that is, but that is not the topic of this video. To sum it up, basically, diesels are our compression ignition engines, and a compression ignition engine relies on ambient air being compressed and heating up and lighting diesel fuel on fire. Now, if the ambient air temperature is minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to be hard to get it hot enough to ignite the diesel fuel. Now there's a many other reasons involved in that as well. They have higher compression ratios, their oil's typically thicker. There's a lot of reasons, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about things that can make it easier for a diesel engine to start in cold weather. So let's get into it. Okay, so before I overanalyze every single little thing about diesel engine starting aids, we're going to be talking about, you know, there's no perfect system that's going to heat up the entire engine and everything's just going to work fine if you wanted to do that you'd park your truck in a heated garage where it's 70 degrees all time or move to miami florida where you're not going to have to worry about 10 degree temperatures but since you're watching this video you probably are not doing either one of those so you you kind of need to come up with a strategy what's the best system most cost effective way to get my engine started and protected from the cold now the most popular ones we're going to be comparing and the most similar are going to be your engine coolant heaters also known as a block heater or jacket water heater and compare that to an engine oil heater okay so let's compare those two okay so the most popular by far and one that's typically installed on a lot of vehicles from the factory diesel vehicles in general is your jacket water heater block heater engine coolant heater this is typically a 110 120 volt plug-in heater coil somewhere in your engine's cooling system it can be by your oil cooler, it can just be on the side of the block. It's gonna be in a, some sort of coolant passage and it's gonna help heat up the engine coolant. Now, there are a lot of advantages to this. First off, they're very inexpensive. Uh, as long as you have a 110 outlet somewhere, you can plug them in and you'll typically leave them on for a while and they'll help heat up the engine. And the way they do that, of course, is by heating up the coolant. And as the coolant heats up, coolant surrounds the engine block mostly around the cylinder walls and in the cylinder head and as that heats up it's going to just help heat up the entire engine and that's a good thing it creates a couple things first off it's going to be easier starting because the engine's already warmer which means the engine's going to warm up faster because it's already starting at a higher heat point not only that if you want to flip on your defroster or heat up the cab faster since those systems rely on your engine coolant those systems are going to be working faster it's a really good design. Now, of course, are there any disadvantages to it? Well, there's disadvantages to everything, but of course it can leak and you could lose some coolant there if something were to happen with the heating element or the seals that seal it. But I would say probably the biggest disadvantage is that it doesn't really help heat up your engine's oil that much. And you might be thinking like, well, the oil's in the engine. Wouldn't it heat it up? Well, it's gonna help raise it slightly. But the reason it's not going to help very much is remember the coolant and the oil are not in direct contact with each other unless the engine's running and the only place they're really in direct contact with each other is in the oil cooler. Now, coolant's always in the oil cooler, but oil isn't. See, when the engine's off, about 90% of the oil's sitting in the oil pan and most of the other 10% is in the oil filter. Now there's no coolant in the oil pan and there's no coolant in the oil filter normally. So the engine block heater is not gonna help raise that oil temperature very much. Not only that, the oil's sitting low in the engine, it's typically sitting in a stamp steel or an aluminum pan and the ambient air temperature is going to be pulling a lot of the heat out of that oil. So it's not really gonna help raise your engine oil temperatures very much. Now, why would you want to heat your engine oil temperatures up? Well, let's talk about the engine oil heater. 
Now an engine oil heater, there's a couple different varieties of them. There are blanket types that actually glue on to the outside of the oil pan. There's also submerged types that's similar to the block heater where they actually go into the oil pan and help heat up, heat up the oil directly, typically with a 110 plug. And that helps raise your engine oil temperature. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, the warmer the oil, the lower the viscosity, meaning it's less thick. Now, very, very thick oil, we'll say at zero degrees, doesn't flow very well. It's very thick. Think of like pancake syrup or gear oil. Very thick. And that has a couple problems. First off, it's harder to get that oil to all your critical engine components, like your bearings, uh, the cylinder walls. Not only that, it's much harder on your oil pump. The biggest problem, though, is the higher the viscosity, the thicker it is, the bigger the pressure differential on the oil filter is going to be. You might think, well, who cares? There's a pressure bypass valve on pretty much every oil filter system so that when the pressure differential is too high, most of the oil is going to bypass the filter. So that super cold oil is going to hit that oil filter. It's going to have a high pressure differential. Most of the filter is not going to be filtering oil. Most of the oil is just going to go right around the filter. So it's not going to be filtering your oil until the temperature heats up and the oil gets thinner. Not only that, the if the oil was cold, it would be running through the engine and actually cooling down all the components you're trying to heat up. That's why an oil heater is important. It'll help warm up that oil, which will help heat up the engine faster. I would say, though, if I had to pick between one or the other, I'd probably go with the jacket water heater. It's just, in general, it keeps the engine overall warmer, and it's more creature comfort for the operator as well. Engine oil heaters, though, important as well. I would say, though, if I had to pick one, I'd go with the jack of water heater. So the next system we need to discuss isn't actually on or going to your engine necessarily, and that is your electrical system. Now, your batteries in particular, when starting, batteries do not like the cold at all. That's why you have a cranking amp and a cold cranking amp rating on every 12-volt battery. I don't know, bro. I took, like, electrical class at, like, uh, tech school, and I remember the teacher saying that, like, electricity likes the cold, so I think batteries would actually operate better in the cold. You know, I don't think that's true. So it is true that current does conduct easier in colder conditions, but that's only through the conductor itself, not the battery source itself. The battery is heavily influenced by the temperature of the battery itself unlike the conductors themselves, which are better operating, typically in colder conditions. As the temperature decreases, the battery is less able to put out as much current. So the colder it is, the harder that engine's gonna be start, simply because the batteries are not able to put out as much current if they're cold. Now, what about the batteries actually freezing? Well, this is possible, but something very weird about batteries is that the freeze point changes um, on based on how well they're charged a 100 percent well charged well conditioned battery will actually freeze at a very very low temperature something like minus 50 degrees fahrenheit opposed to a battery that's almost dead if the battery's almost discharged completely it's going to freeze at almost 32 degrees fahrenheit or zero degrees celsius so in general unless you're going to the arctic i would say probably the best way to keep your batteries from freezing is to install some sort of battery tender that's going to keep them purposely well charged, just a little trickle charge. That will actually keep them from freezing and keep them well charged. There are things called battery blankets or battery heaters though as well. And typically it's kind of like an electric blanket that you'll generally just plug in and it'll be a 110 volt style plug similar to your jacket water heater or oil heater. And that'll just help heat up the batteries. Now, why would you wanna do that? Because even if it's 10 degrees outside, if the batteries are 70 degrees, they're not gonna be using the cold cranking amp rating. They're gonna be using the cranking amp rating, which is always higher than the cold cranking amp rating. Let's talk about your fuel source though. Now fuel is used in general to help cool the injectors and the cylinder head during normal operation, but in general, it just sits in the tank. Very little capacity of the fuel system is in the engine itself. Most of it's in the fuel tank. And on a large diesel truck, you can have, you know, a couple hundred gallons of diesel fuel. So it'd be very difficult to heat all of that up. Now, why would you want to heat fuel up, though? I mean, it doesn't really get thicker, per se. Well, 
It can get thicker. It can actually get to the point where it stops flowing altogether, very cold conditions. But there's a problem with diesel fuel, and in particular, number two diesel fuel. There's different grades of diesel fuel. There's number two and number one. Number two is the most common. And the problem with it is, as it gets cold, usually around the freezing point, although that can vary, there's something called a cloud point. And in normal diesel fuel, you have waxes that form, paraffin waxes that are normal. This isn't an additive or anything. These are just in the diesel fuels. And these waxes, as they get cooler, start to solidify. Now, this doesn't necessarily injure anything in the system, but they can form large wax globs and those globs can plug up your fuel filter now unlike the oil filter system your fuel filter doesn't really have a bypass it's one way in and one way out so as the waxes start accumulating around that filter generally it's going to be your primary fuel filter your fuel water separator it's going to plug it up once it's plugged up there's no way fuel's getting into the engine so it doesn't matter how warm your engine is that sucker's not going to start because it's not going to have fuel. Now, this creates a problem. How are you supposed to heat a couple hundred gallons of diesel fuel up if it's zero degrees out? Well, you don't have to heat all of it up. What you do need, though, is to keep it warm at mostly the filter head, and that will enable those waxes to not solidify. So generally, you can install something if you don't have one already called a fuel heater, and typically that fuel heater is going to be mounted on the filter element itself and usually they're regulated to the point that if it's about 60 degree fuel temperature they'll turn off if it's getting closer to 40 or 30 they'll turn on and they're generally that's not something you plug in it's something that usually runs off of the dc system whether it's 12 or 24 volts and it's kind of a self-regulating system if you're having problems with fuel freezing on you you might want to think about installing a fuel heater now there are fuel heaters that can go into the tank they rely on the engine coolant to keep the fuel warmer but that's creating a problem because then you're actually cooling the coolant through the fuel not only that they can leak coolant into the fuel there's a lot of problems with it generally once the engine's warm you're going to be pumping fuel into it and it's going to be drawing some of the heat out so that will help keep the fuel temperatures up slightly Okay, so now we need to talk about basically active cold starting aids. These aren't ones you're going to plug in and wait for something to warm up or, or something preventative like a fuel heater. These are something that when you crank it, you want that engine to start right away and you need a way to basically heat up the air or add some sort of external combustion to the cylinder to help it start faster. So basically what we're talking about here are glow plugs or inlet air heaters opposed to an ether injection system. Now both of these are just, they're not there to protect your engine at all. They're basically just there to help it start easier. One is safer than the other and basically neither should ever be used at the same time. So let's get into basically what's a glow plug, what's an inlet air heater, and then what's an ether injection system. An inlet air heater or glow plugs, uh, glow plugs basically like the old cigarette lighters cars used to have or similar to your jacket water heater except it's on the intake manifold generally. And all it's there to do is to help raise the intake air temperature slightly. We're not talking, you know, 10 degrees to 400 degrees. It's just going to raise it from maybe 10 degrees to 80 degrees. And that's going to help that combustion process in the cylinders. It's just going to help it start easier. Glow plugs are doing the same thing. Typically, glow plug is in the cylinder somewhere and an inlet air heater is in the intake somewhere. Now, why did I say you don't want to use an ether injection system? and an inlet air heater or glow plug. Well, ether injection, ether is super, super, super flammable. That's why it works so good. You spray it in as a mist, it goes into the cylinder, under normal combustion or compression, it's just gonna explode. It's gonna help the engine start moving faster, even if the diesel isn't necessarily igniting. Would you wanna spray that super highly flammable liquid or mist onto a glow plug or an inlet air heater? No, no you don't. Now, in general, I don't really recommend ether injection. Ether has a host of problems with it that overuse can damage your engine slowly over time or very, very rapidly. Uh, ether can wash the oil off the cylinder walls. It can cause uh, pre-combustion, all sorts of problems, okay? It does work though. If you're in super cold conditions, engine won't start, 
Ether might be the key, but I would say I would try to pick an inlet air heater system over an Ether injection system. Okay, so we just discussed all the systems. If I was building one, let's say I was building a truck and I wanted to go up to Northern Alaska or something, what would I add or how would I build it? Well, I would put a jacket water heater in opposed to an engine oil heater. And the reason for that is just simplicity, easier to get, it works better for heating up the overall engine. However, with that being said, I would install some sort of insulation on the oil pan to help retain that heat in the engine better so that the oil's not losing the heat as fast. Not only that, as the engine heats up, the jack of water heater, it's gonna help that oil heat up slightly more than if there was no sort of engine blanket insulation. Now, I would also make sure I have an engine fuel heater as well on the filter because in super cold conditions, you're gonna get a lot more clouding. Now, what I didn't discuss before was that number two and number one diesel are different because number one doesn't have the waxes necessarily that number two does. And the reason we don't just always run number one is because number one doesn't have as much energy per gallon as number two. So you're actually getting less energy, less fuel, if you wanna think about it, per gallon. So, but you can switch to a heavier one versus two ratio and see where in the temperatures you're talking about where it runs best i would probably also install a small battery charger tender and a an battery blanket so jack of water heater oil pan blanket but not necessarily heater make sure it has a fuel heater uh, you could also mess with the oil viscosities check with your engine manufacturer that if you're still going to run some sort of 40 weight on the hot side i'd say a 5w40 synthetic would be best probably instead of the 15w40 and then get those batteries nice and warm and make sure they're well charged you should be good to go thanks for watching